Hi, um, so we now uh, take a look at um, Fourier series um, and the question that we have requires us to find the fundamental period of uh, the given uh, trigonometric functions. So when it comes to Fourier series, it's actually very important for you to understand um, what a period is. And of course, uh, I believe by now you understand what a periodic function is. Okay, so and we say um, a function f, if you're given a function f, it is said to be periodic, um, uh, let's say with a period greater than zero, if uh, say f of t plus p where p is a period is the same as or is equals to f of t itself. So if this is satisfied then that uh, function that you have f is actually periodic. Okay, so um, there are different functions that we can uh, look at to try to test to say if they're periodic or not, but in this case we're just looking at uh, finding the uh, fundamental period of, um, of a given function. And again, uh, you might want to um, understand what uh, it means by uh, the fundamental period. And of course, when you think of a function, a function being uh, having a period, you're just talking about uh, the region in which a function repeats itself. So for example, uh, let's say you have uh, something like, uh, let's say that is our our vertical axis, which is our y-axis, then we have our horizontal axis, which is our x-axis, then something like that. So wait a minute, so this is x and this is actually y. So uh, let's say it's something like this. Okay, so this is actually um, a function of, this is sine x, yeah, or sine theta, like that. So at this point you have a zero, at this point you have uh, pi, and at this point you have two pi, okay? So uh, the interval in which the function repeat it, it repeats itself uh, within, like from, let's say from this point to that point, if you look at this, what you have right here, that's Two pi, meaning that's a period of that particular function. So you saw just talking about the region in which a function repeats itself. Okay, so of course we kind of like scale the whole thing by mentioning it as the fundamental period, uh, which actually makes sense in a long term if you think about it. Okay. So uh, another thing that you need to understand about uh, uh, the period is that if uh, the period p is greater than zero, okay? If this is a period of a function f and uh, there is a smaller period um, p itself, um, which we call as the fundamental period, of course, you can actually just call it as a period, okay? So now let's look at some these examples uh, and see if we can determine that fundamental period, okay? So the first example that we are going to look at is uh, cos cos x or cos theta, okay, cos, theta, uh, cos x or cos theta. So one thing that you need to understand is that um, such basic functions, they are going to help us to um, understand how to come up with the uh, fundamental period of a function, and hence you're going to use the same method when it comes to um, other functions that might appear a bit complicated, but of course there are some issues that you have to take into consideration, such as scaling in some cases, okay. So for this one, we are going to say um, um, f of t, okay, f of t will be equals to, we have a, fun, we have a period uh, p where, um, uh, where p is equals to 2 pi in this case. And one way in which uh, I can, I, one way in which I can ad, advise you to uh, approach such questions to, simpli to simplify work for yourself is that you can give yourself a sample function such as, let's say, cos ax something like this okay so you know to say the period of a function cos x is actually 2 pi okay or is actually p okay so now this means that if you have something of this kind if you look at the angle that you have here okay if you look at the angle that you have the period now will change okay you're going to say p will be equals to 2 pi divided by divide divide by a 
this V here is very important. It's going to answer a lot of questions. Okay, basically what I did here is that I have a coefficient of one. I didn't have to say divide by one here. Okay, so it simply means if you have anything where A is greater than one, let's say it's a two, it's a three or anything, uh, for you to simplify that, um, you can just write the period in that manner. Okay, so the period for cos x is actually 2 pi is the same as the period for what the period for sine x okay so now let's look at uh, another example where let's say I give you 2 uh, let's say cos 2 pi okay cos 2 pi what would be the period okay what would be uh, the period is it 2 pi no 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 let me give 2 let me say 2x okay so it simply means the period p will be equals to 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x here, which we named as a at first, that is going to be 2. This will be equals to pi. So it simply means the period of 2x, sorry, the period of cos 2x is actually pi. Simple as that. Okay. So uh, this same, this method also applies to sine, sine 2x. Okay. So we can see kind of like a pattern there. So uh, let's look at... Uh, let me say I give you something like a uh, cos cos pi x what is going to be all the same okay all the same this is going to be uh, the period is going to be equals to 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x in this case which is pi so me so uh, meaning the period of cos pi x is going to be equals to a 2 and the same applies to sine uh, sine pi x okay so let's say we have um, is there anything that appears complicated that I can pick so let's say we have something like cos uh, cos 2 pi over over k x there like that this is one and the same thing okay so this right here as I said it's more like that's an a Okay, so you can say the period is equals to 2 pi divided by divided by a. So this is more like 2 pi like that divided by 2 pi over over k. That's what our a is. Okay, this can be written as 2 pi multiplied by k divided by uh, 2 pi. So you can cancel out that one, cancel out that one. So you find that the period is equals to k. And the same applies to if you are given co uh, not cos but sine. Okay, sine uh, let's say 2 pi 2 pi over n x something like that. So just focus your attention on the coefficient of x and you are going to simplify your work. So all in all uh, when you think of a period uh, of a function just think of um, a period is where a function repeats itself okay and how you simplify it is this way most measure in terms of trig functions the same method that I've shown you whether it's cos or sine and of course you have to think of scaling sometimes uh, in some cases but it's it's almost the same thing like actually I, I, for me I see it as the same thing I actually see it as, as the same thing so um, remember I said if you have cos ax finding the period just say p is cos you know the period for cos x but you're looking for the period for cos ax so just going to say uh, 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x that's how we do it and that's all in this video thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one